What's good everybody, I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and welcome back to First Look. Now in this series, we'll basically be doing just that and taking an early season look at how some of the top prospects in the 2022 class have fared. To start it off, we've got one of the most heralded players in Duke's Paolo Bancaro. Paolo is a 6'10", 250-pound forward who is a very good athlete and a great scoring talent. The sky's the limit for the most part with guys of his caliber, but at the moment he projects as this versatile scoring and playmaking four-man in the mold of your Julius Randles and Blake Griffins, but with more of a perimeter skill set than they had entering the league, reminiscent of like a supersized Jason Tatum. Let's go ahead and get into how he's performed so far this year. We won't go completely in depth on every area he's shown, but we'll keep it to the most important. I think the thing that immediately pops when watching Paolo is his ability to create shots for himself on the perimeter at the size of some centers in the modern NBA. He's got a pretty polished handle for a big dude, and it's clear that he was one of those guys who used to be a guard and then had a couple wild growth spurts later on. Over these first several games, he's continued to show the ability to smoothly cross over into dribble pull-ups, he also does damage from the triple threat on the perimeter or facing up in the mid post using jabs. And he's extremely effective from the mid range. He's shooting nearly 63% there or 10 to 16 on the year. And it's probably his favorite area to get to outside of the more traditional paint scores, which of course make up the majority of his points. Now this is just a terrific move. Paulo has Keon Brooks one on one. He pump fakes, gets into his body a little, and then gets into the rocker step. Hard dribble to his right, immediately into the one dribble pull up from about 17 feet. In semi transition, Paulo pulls back and gets a screen from Mark Williams. The 4 5 pick and roll is super tough anywhere, but especially in college. Drew Timmy switches out onto him, he sizes him up with the quick between the legs behind the back and gets smoothly into that 20 footer. The dude just turned 19 and is only going to expand from here. The next thing that probably catches your eye if it's not first is just how much of a physical presence he is. I haven't got to see him in person just yet, but when I saw Jalen Johnson in Summer League up close, that was one of my biggest takeaways. And Paulo clears him in most areas athletically and in the measurables. He's really tough to stop when he can get downhill, and especially when he immediately sees that driving angle out top. He loves to get to that spin move as he feels players recovering to get back into position. There have been a few mixed results on him converting using this so far, but he's certainly created some good opportunities from it. The long outstretched arm of Mark Williams. Here's this play, this first one, just beautiful footwork, really good speed. It's kind of easy to take for granted if you've seen him play for a while, but his ability to take it off the glass and lead the break is remarkable at that size, and it's something I think can be extremely valuable for him heading into the league. And just in basketball, you're always going to be at an advantage if you have several players you can trust with the ball rather than your classic, get the ball to the point guard and then run. It's probably his current best area as a passer, and it's clear he relishes the opportunities of getting into the open floor. He is no good. Great feed up the wind down more. Junior. Follow won't go, and here come the Blue Devils again. And Carroll Williams. On defense. Baker, another three. This one. Part of what makes him so compelling as a prospect is his ability to do all these things in different situations. He's not relying on one play style or certain personnel group to be an effective player. He can play on the perimeter, shoot it a bit, operate out of the lower mid post. He's shown some potential as a pick and roll ball handler and screener and can make things happen in transition. I'm not saying all of these are complete finished pieces of his game, but the potential versatility is there and it's an enticing set of attributes to work with. There's definitely promise on the defensive end too, and we'll get into that a little bit more here in a second. Now let's get into the section of things I'm watching going forward. I think one piece that I'll take Ben Carroll to the next level is improving his overall decision making. He's done a pretty solid job of keeping the turnovers down in the macro, especially against the big time opponents, so I don't want to mislead, but this is just an overall area I think he can still get better at. There are times when he can get out of control or a bit sped up while driving, resulting in a charge or just leaving more to be desired when he's operating in traffic. 
In addition to this, when he's in the post or with his back to the basket, just reading the help or double quicker and delivering the ball to the open man is definitely there to get better. A play like this is a good example. I know he sees Wendell over there, but for whatever reason he doesn't make the pass until he dribbles all the way into the middle of the paint, missing out on a potential great shot. He's had some really great moments here, but I know teams will try to throw different things at him as the year goes on. And Carroll across court. And Cameron indoor to do it. Understand the game. And Carroll. Keels open for three. Defensively, I think he's got quite a bit of potential, and Paulo has shown it on several occasions, but it's not quite consistent at the moment. He's solid, not a great lateral mover, but plays like these are why I'm still looking for more out of him going forward. I think he's capable of being better just by patching up the little things and working on his position. Also, being more aware of the plays developing and where he is in terms of help position will take him a very long way. He's not much of a natural shot blocker and probably won't ever be, but he can improve with better positioning, anticipation, and just a little bit of effort. Tried to feed him up, Hayden Brown with a head of steam, backing in John Shovel. Pass blocked once without a point. It's allowed Duke to pull away here. We'll save all the mechanics and everything else for another day. How his three point shot looks down the stretch of this season could be an important piece. And I'm not necessarily talking about the college percentage, but more of his effectiveness, the volume, and the projectability of his shot in general. He's kind of caught fire in the latter half of these games so far after not being much of a threat out there to start. Arrow pulls the trigger from three. Nemhart and Watson waiting to check in for the Zags. Good pass. Now to some important games. Duke has a pretty weak schedule the rest of the way, which really isn't a big fault to their own. This is about as bad as the ACC has been in a fat minute. However, I'm interested to see how Paulo performs in another Bright Lights game like UNC, and really just his game-to-game -game consistency and improvement heading into tournament season. I have to mention that this man reportedly sweats 7 pounds during games, and on the surface that sounds insane, but for a guy his size is actually not too far from the ordinary. This clip from Brian Sutter does a great job of explaining what's going on here in terms of his cramps and hydration issues. This headline of 7 pounds of sweat loss during exercise is in no way alarming in and of itself. The key is to replace those 7 pounds of loss with adequate fluid and electrolyte replenishment. Certainly if that neuromuscular fatigue doesn't improve for Paolo throughout the season, or he continues to have some susceptibility based on levels of dehydration, or even sometimes when athletes come into games a little bit less hydrated, they can be more susceptible, then yeah, I could see it being an issue going forward. But most of the time, these guys have access to resources that are good enough at controlling these things that I don't think it would be a big issue going forward. I think it's safe to put Paulo Bancaro in easy top two contention for the 2022 draft. Right now, he's my number one player, and while things could definitely change, I don't see many scenarios where he's not at least top three pick next June for many of the reasons we talked about in this video. I appreciate you guys for watching. I expect to do a few more of these covering some of the other top and most interesting players in the class, so keep it locked if you're ready for them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and comment down below what you think of Paolo's game. I'm Keandre, this is Hoopin' Elect, and I'm out. Life's good, let's toast up. Cheers to hotels all over, and girls that pick you up from airports when you told them. Navy Blue, Fairfax, Delphi on my shoulder.